The passion for horse racing, it comes in many ways. Perhaps a friend takes you to the races and next thing you know, you are hooked. For Mark Mache and Horatio Kemeny, it came when they were youngsters at eight and nine years old and thus formed the beginning of one of the legendary stables here at Hastings Racecourse, Swift Thoroughbreds Incorporated. Quite interesting story you will enjoy. Way back, I guess I was about nine years old, 10 years old, my grandmother brought me to Hastings Park, Exhibition Park back then. And um, I don't know, just walking in there, they, all the people and the buzz and the beautiful horses running around instantly, I just sort of loved it from day one. And it didn't take long that my best friend at the time, Horatio, came along. And as 10-year-olds, we sort of, um, we got hooked pretty young. And we just loved sort of everything about it. And um, luckily, as time went on and we met our lovely wives, um, they sort of caught the bug as well. So that's where it began. When I was younger, my grandfather had uh, harness race horses, so I was around harness race horses at a young age. And then when I met Mark, our first date was at Hastings Park. During the p &E, he took me to the track and uh, we had some fun there, tested it out, had some drinks, went through the PE and and... Heck of a first date. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, not very romantic, <laughs> but I guess he was making sure I was interested. <laughs> now, how do all you all meet? Uh, I met Mark uh, in school, in grade seven. And my, I hadn't been involved in horse racing at all until then. <laughs> and uh, he dragged me into it, or his grandmother dragged us both into it. And, uh, you know, after that, we were heading off there by ourselves when we were 12, 13, 14, hop on our bikes and head off to the track. Seems like all you are involved, the girls, are you all involved in the sport? These guys have a longer <laughs> history and more opinions maybe than we have yeah. about different things, but definitely as far as, um, you know, which horses are we gonna buy? Which yearlings are we gonna buy? Um, what are we gonna name them? Which ones are, where are we gonna, you know, place them, um, that's really up to Dino, but everything's kind of run by everybody, and as a group we get along really well, so we seem to be always kind of unanimous on everything, so we've had a, a good friendship and a good relationship as horse owners together, so it seems pretty easy, I think. We all seem to agree all the time, so. Jackie, does it make the sport more comfortable when both parts of a family, when all the family's involved in horse racing? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I was not much of a gambler before <laughs> before uh, meeting Horatio and, and one of our first dates was also at Hastings Park and uh, you know I had to meet Mark and Nadia and uh, I kind of got the in, you know. <laughs> oh, that's right. I got bitten by that bug as well so and here we are. <laughs> yeah. Horatio, when you, got, when you get into the sport, what were you guys' goals? Uh, our initial goal was let's have as, as much fun as we can with this. You know, this has been a passion for decades. Uh, let's get into it, you know, we'll put in the kind of money that we need to do it right so that we can do it at a level that, that we're happy with. Uh, if we make some money doing it, then fantastic. If we do our part in supporting the industry, great. And uh, I think we're achieving that. I mean, we're having a blast. We're bringing the horses that I think are improving not just our stable, but, but racing in general around here. And uh, we're really happy with with the direction that we're... A few years back, you did something you've that's very rarely done in, in the sport. You hired a private trainer. Can you tell us why and who he is? Yeah, do you know, when we first got involved in racing, uh, we looked around for what trainer would fit uh, the sort of style of, of involvement that we were trying to do. Uh, we met Dino, and Dino has become a very close friend to all of us. And uh, at some point, you know, we decided it would make a lot of sense for him if he could focus exclusively on our horses and not have to be worrying uh, about other people's horses and, and, and uh, dealing with that part of it, uh, it would be beneficial for all of us. And uh, we approached him with, with a deal and uh, he was happy with it and we're delighted with it. And we're in the fourth year of that right now. You also set up a video system that you probably were the first group that, that set, up at, set it up at the barn. We thought it wouldn't it be neat to be able to sort of see what's going on when we're not here, whether we're at home or somewhere else. Uh, there's a system of cameras in the barn and we can access it through the internet. And it's fun to keep tabs on what's going on. Where do you go get these good horses from? It's a million dollar um, question that all <laughs> owners face. Uh, well, you find them, well we found them, you just have to look everywhere. Uh, we have a few really good relationships with um, some very good stables. Um, in the U.S. that we've had some success with. 
uh, Windstar being one, Darley being one, and a few others. And um, I know we have a tremendous respect for how they run their business, and we have some really strong relationships with them. Um, and we've done some business with them in the past, so we we really cherish that relationship. And I think they have mutual respect for us and how we run our barns and how we run our business. So, um, but I gotta say, the one thing that we've learned over the last decade is that nobody gives away a good <laughs> horse. So. Um, yeah, you, you can find them at a yearling sale, you find them privately, you can claim one. You, you sort of, you find lightning in a bottle, basically. Tell us about the relationship with Darley, Darley Stables. Darley, we, it, as one of the many relationships we have with, with barns around, you know, the world, I guess, uh, we were put in contact with them a few years ago, and, um, you know, they, they're an absolutely magnificent operation. They, they run everything top-notch. We've seen some opportunities where they have some horses that uh, you know, they think would be a better fit here, and they've approached us and, and, and said, you know, if you'd like to talk about this horse or that horse, uh, let's discuss it. And uh, for the most part, it's been an absolutely terrific relationship for both parties. Is it a case, though, when you're buying nine horses, eight horses, they're not all good horses? You, you could get one definitely. Definitely. <laughs> definitely, that's the case. When you buy nine of them, uh, you know, we, we, we will. I guess we are hoping that one or two turns out to be something useful at Hastings Park in, in the way that we want them to be useful. I mean, our goals um, maybe are for um, stakes races, and that's what we're sort of aiming for with um, that type of horse. And um, we aren't going to get that with all nine of them, but hopefully there's a fit for you know each of those horses at some level at Hastings, and um, they're all well-bred horses and well-trained horses problems here and there with some of them try and help them out but um, basically the, you're not going to have all nine of them turning out to be what you want it's just sort of a, it's just a, a pot, potluck sort of bag of horses we'll have the second part of our visit with swift thoroughbreds on our next show